So I want to discuss the controversy involving Rose Miller from Queen of Kings and talk about the optics. And I also want to talk about the interview Rose did with Tasha Kay. And just an FYI, my commentary is not a personal attack on Tasha or Rose. It's more so about what both of them represent. So Rose Miller, known as Queen of Kings, has a very successful social media platform with her husband, Brett, and they are the typical couples channel that vlogs and uh, skits online. And I'll be honest with you, I am not very familiar with their content, but apparently a black man left Rose as a single mother of two. And then sometime after that, she eventually got married to this white man, had two more children, and she often gloated about how this provider white man came and rescued her, swept her off her feet, married her, spoils her and her children. And she also encourages black women to explore their options with non-black men. Now, based on my research and what she said in the Tasha K interview, that is not the bulk of her content, but it is part of it. So about a week ago, a video of Rose and Brett arguing went viral. And she said in the video that she's been paying for their lifestyle and he hasn't been taking care of her. And on the interview that she did with Tasha K, she said that that is not true. And she was exaggerating because she was mad at the time. And she felt like she wasn't getting enough acknowledgement by him and the audience. But the truth is that he was only out of work for four months. And according to her, he is still very much a provider and takes care of her and the kids. Now, I don't know if Rose is telling the truth. She may be attempting to do damage control, but even if she's telling the truth now, she's already compromised the integrity of her platform. And now so many of the women following her just see her as being someone who faked a relationship, lied about being rescued by this white knight in shining armor, and they don't trust her anymore. And it's going to be very hard for her to reverse that. And this is why I keep telling y'all not to overshare online and move in silence especially when it comes to your relationship. Not only is it dangerous for you individually, but it's just a bad look in general. And if you go viral, you make yourself the perfect fodder for these platforms that are looking for any reason to pounce on a black woman, especially a black woman who is with a non-black man or encourages black women to date out. They have a special hatred for us. Now, what's also a bad look is how Tasha Kay and many other black women responded to this situation. And this is why I personally believe that black women women need our own brand of PR optics and response strategies or training because the way we respond to things is not in our best interest at all. Just like I thought black women looked foolish going after Tasha Kay on Cardi B's behalf. A non-black woman who called black women roaches, called a black woman's child a monkey, and has a general disdain for black women. We continuously cape for the wrong people, either directly or indirectly. And that is what happened in this interview with Tasha Kay. But I do think that this interview reveals why a lot of black women in particular were outraged by this story. It wasn't just about Rose lying to her audience or trying to sell them a dream. It's about their deep resentment of black women who date out. And I think Tasha Kay represents represents how a lot of black women feel about black women who date interracially. It all stems back to black men. To see my exclusive content, become a member of this channel, join my Patreon, or visit ChrissyOnline.com. And be sure to join the mailing list for updates on future videos. The links are in the description box. Please like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching. So I'm going to cover some of the points made in the interview. I'm not going to play it because this video will be way too long. I'm just going to cover the most important parts and y'all can go watch the interview on your own time. So one of the first points Tasha made was that Rose does a lot of race bait content and attempts to trigger black men by comparing them to her white husband. And Rose's response to that was, well, if they're triggered, they need to do better. And she talked about the marriage stats in the black community and how many black men abandon their children. And she said that her content is less about triggering black men and more to encourage black women to explore their options because we're way too loyal to black men. And y'all know I 100% agree with that. Now what I will say is that if Rose's aim is to just encourage black women to explore our options, nothing is wrong with that. But just having an interracial couples channel and existing with your husband and your family will do that on its own. All the extra is unnecessary in my opinion. And again, not very familiar with Rose's content. So I don't know the extent of the race baiting, but if she's lying or exaggerating about her lifestyle or trying to trigger or prove something to black men in the black community, that just shows that she is still overly invested in the black community and what black men think. And it points to some underlying resentment that she probably needs to work through. 
The point of black women exploring our options to non-black men is first and foremost because we're actually interested in dating them and also to give ourselves more options and a higher chance of finding someone who's compatible. The point is not to try to upset black men or exaggerate or make up a lifestyle. And the black women in interracial relationships who don't come off as being too try hard are usually the ones who are most successful at influencing other black women. I mean, look at Serena Williams and Gabby Sidibe. They are just living their lives. They don't say anything about race for the most part and they encourage black women to open up their options just by existing and we know the community is always somewhere crying about them being with white men or crying about how black women support their interracial relationships so even though I do agree with Rose the extra is unnecessary and I'll also say that some of this is just the nature of a lot of online couple spaces they perform for money so something is bound to be exaggerated or fake now some of them are more genuine than others so mileage may vary but most of it's glamour and the sooner we realize that the less outrage will be when these people get exposed and by the way I did a video on glamour for Neptunian members and patrons so definitely check that out if you're interested the links are down in the description box but this content online whether it be relationships lifestyle soft life luxury it's glamour and it should all be consumed for entertainment purposes escapism promotional purposes in some cases but it should never be something that you idolize or romanticize because a lot of it is not real it's not supposed to be it's supposed to be inspirational more than anything and I think it's fine to apply bits and pieces that you like about this content to your life if possible but don't drink the kool-aid and don't think that you have to live up to what's being shown it's there to entertain you and make you feel good for a minute that's it now another point Tasha kept reiterating throughout the interview was that white men are just as bad as black men and this is a common talking point that black male identified women make I used to make it too when I was black male identified and here's the thing do dusties come in every race? Of course they do. I have said it several times, but it's also more likely for a black woman who is looking for more of a traditional relationship dynamic to find that in a non-black man. And it's not worshiping white men or non-black men to say that. And in the interview, Tasha did a lot of black male splaining and attempt to downplay their dustiness on a collective level. On one part of the interview, Tasha blamed Rose's baby daddy not being there for his children on him being young when they had their children. But that doesn't make sense because Rose was young too and she is still there right now taking care of her children. Rose and mothers in general can't use the excuse that they were young when it comes to not taking care of their children. And Rose said right in the interview that she's really not even tripping on the past like that. It's what her baby daddy isn't doing right now. And Tasha's response to that was, oh, well, isn't he paying child support? As if that is the only requirement to being an active father. Then she started talking about how she knows all of these white men who are deadbeat fathers. And Rose was like, of course they exist, but we're talking about the stats and what is is more likely to happen in the black community. And like it or not, she is right. The stats show that black women are usually the breadwinners of their households. And we can even look past the stats and factor in the anecdotal evidence. Look at all of the black women who complain about their baby daddies not taking care of their children. Yes, non-black men do it too, but black men are the worst. That is not debatable. So Tasha trying to conflate and equalize black men and white men where they can't really be equalized and her defending the indefensible when it comes to black men, it just just shows how desperate she was to protect and coddle black men in this interview. And I noticed that when black people see a black woman with a non-black man who is dusty, they immediately compare him to a black man. They're always like, ha ha, you're having the same problems with a white man or ha ha, you're struggling just like me and Tyrone, so you're no better than me. But I don't think many of the black people who say that realize that they're exposing themselves in the condition of most black relationships. If the argument is that Rose's husband is quote unquote just as bad or dusty as a black man, then what does that say about black men? And I saw black women on TikTok responding to this story saying that the point of getting a non-black man is to date up financially because he's more privileged and because he's higher paid. And again, if you're saying that, what does that say about black men? You're telling on yourselves and your relationships and deep down, most of you agree with what Rose is saying about non-black men being better providers and higher paid on average than black men. You agree with her, it just pains you to admit it. And that is why 
Tasha was reaching like she was in this interview. And there was also a part in here where Rose said that non-American black men were slightly better than American men because they're usually more traditional and marriage minded. And Tasha even put on the cape for American black men, even though she herself is married to an African man. So Tasha knows what Rose is saying is true. She is just too prideful to admit it, at least in this interview. And I noticed that anytime an interracial relationship involving a black woman fails, a lot of black people start reaching and saying things that don't make sense. And a very popular narrative that people are trying to create about black women when it comes to stories like this is the idea that we do way more for white men than we do for black men and we lower our standards with white men. When statistically that is not true. We have the lowest standards with black men. This is why Rose was a two-time baby mama to a black man that does not take care of his children. And in one part of the interview, they were talking about how Rose's husband at some point moved in with her. And Tasha was like, oh, well, you wouldn't move a black man in your house like you did your husband. But she probably would have. Women like Rose are going to choose poorly and make bad decisions no matter what race of men they date. So she didn't lower her standards. They were already low. She actually chose a little bit better with her husband despite him not being the best. So all this talk about, oh, y'all have lower standards for white men, we absolutely do not. And then if the argument is, oh, well, you're getting the, the bottom shelf brads and you're getting the, the dusties of the white community, or you guys are dating dusty white men too, that by default means that the standards are low across the board. So black people just keep pushing that false narrative because I think they're projecting. They feel like black women collectively are doing more for white men because they're jealous of that relationship pairing. That's what I think. I also noticed in the interview that Tasha used a lot of the typical choose better manospheric talking points against Rose. She pretty much implied that Rose is upset because she couldn't get the black man that she wanted. She also said that Rose has a bad attitude and that's why she can't attract a good black man. And while I agree that having a pleasant attitude attracts more men and people to a woman in general, that didn't have anything to do with Rose's complaints about black men in the black community. Rose said that her problem with black men is them abandoning their children. She said her issue with black people is the dysfunctional aspects of black culture. She also said that she wasn't originally looking for a white man when she met her husband. She said he's the one that made her decide that white men or non-black men were her preference. And she also didn't say that she was completely closed off from dating black men and she didn't say anything about not being able to attract a decent black man. But Tasha was so busy mewling for the collective of black men that all of that went over her head. And it's interesting that Tasha even brought up Rose's attitude when she was the one that became extremely hostile in the interview. Towards the end of the interview, she called Rose's husband a cracker. She insulted his looks. She claims that he fetishizes Rose and she couldn't provide any evidence or basis for that claim. She was very hostile and disrespectful towards Rose and Rose was very calm and wasn't disrespectful towards Tasha at all. Tasha even apologized to her at the end. So in my opinion, this wasn't really an interview. It was more like an interrogation and an attack on Rose for saying or implying that non-black men were better partners than black men. Tasha was more upset about that than she was about Rose potentially lying to her audience. Now, another point that Tasha made in the interview was that Rose embarrassed and emasculated her husband. And I saw a lot of black women with the same sentiments, especially when it came to Rose exposing her husband for not paying for their lifestyle. And I think one of the reasons black women responded this way to that specifically is because a lot of them are actually hiding that they are the breadwinners in their relationships to make the men they're with feel more like a man or feel more traditionally masculine. Many of them are doing exactly what Rose is doing and worse or what she says she did for four months. So they expected Rose to keep it to herself like they do. And I'm not sure if Tasha is the breadwinner in her marriage, but I'm assuming that she is because I think her husband is her manager. So I think her husband works for her. And in the interview, she compared wives and marriages to the queen in the game of chess. And she said that the king stays put on the board because he's the foundation and he's supposed to stay at home and, and be the foundation. And it's the queen that moves around. That was her analogy. So she was basically saying that it's the woman's job to hold it down and do most of the work in the marriage. And unfortunately, a lot of women and especially black women have bought into this idea that women are made to sacrifice all or most of themselves for a man. We've bought into the idea that we are supposed to be that long suffering ride or die chick that endures struggle and stands by her man no matter what he does. And many black women are doing that with black men. So many of them want other black women to to struggle with them, whether they are with a black man or a non-black man. 
And of course, sacrifice comes with any relationship, but it does seem like black women think that it is their duty to sacrifice more of themselves for a man than other race women. So in another part of the interview, Tasha blamed black men abandoning their children on racism, white supremacy, and white men. And she said that black men abandoned their children because white men abandoned their children they had with the slaves during slavery. And she said that black men learned from their playbook. And she said that Rose and and other black women are blaming black men for a system that white men created. But then she turned right around and started talking about deadbeat toxic mothers and toxic black women. And guess what? She didn't give them the excuse of racism, white supremacy. And I noticed that in these, you know, quote unquote, pro-black conversations, which are really pro-black men, I noticed that when black mothers and black women in general are doing something wrong, we're just wrong. And we're just toxic and we're just responsible for our own actions. But when black men do something wrong, it's never their fault. It's always the black woman's fault or the white man's fault or white supremacy. But I noticed that black women like Tasha never question why are the collective of black men so easily controlled and manipulated by everyone? Why are they so easy to dominate and disempower and conquer, especially if they're so masculine and genetically superior? How are women and other men able to control black men so easily. Like, I don't think women like Tasha realize that she's proving the point Rose was making about how black men differ from other races of men collectively. And I think deep down, Tasha knows the truth just like most black women, but we don't wanna admit it because so many of us still date and marry black men, we have black male children, and we don't wanna feel bad about our choices and the men that we birth. And I totally get it, but part of the reason black men are how they are is because black women coddle and infantilize them. Black Black women and especially black women with sons. Y'all need to hold them accountable the same way y'all hold black women accountable when we do something wrong. Everything can't be his black mommy's fault and the evil white man's fault. If we can't blame all of our problems on racism and white supremacy and white men, neither can they. And also if they collectively feel no obligation to cape for us or only date us, we're not obligated to cape for them and only date them. And there's one thing that Rose said in this interview that I 100% agree with. And she said that black men never go hard for black women like Tasha was going hard for black men. And I'll add to that, they especially don't go hard for women who look like Tasha. We all know it to be true. And unfortunately, it's always the unambiguous dark-skinned women going hard in the paint for the collective of black men when they rarely do it for us. And Tasha doubled down. Like she came back and, cause I saw it on her community tab and she was like, hell yeah, I worship black men. I got a black son and blah, 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 blah. So baby, she, she, she's standing 10 toes down. And look, I know that Tasha is married to a black man. I know she has black sons, but black men can be married to black women and have black daughters and still not cape this hard for the collective of black women. And in another part of the interview, Tasha asked Rose well how would you feel if a black woman rejected your black son because he's black and Rose said with a straight face that she wouldn't feel any way about it so it is possible for a black woman not to blindly cape for all black men or expect black women to only date black men just because she has a black son it is possible for a black woman not to see her son in every random black man. And I did a video on that, by the way, go check it out. It is possible for a black woman to be able to look at the conditions of the black community objectively, even though she has a black son. So I commend Rose for that. And see, Tasha thinks that because she's with a black man and she has black sons and black male family members and black male friends, she thinks that she's obligated to cape for every black man. And she also said in the interview that because she has a platform that is her job to protect her community. But she doesn't realize that the collective of black men with and without platforms that are just as big as hers, they don't feel that same sense of obligation. They don't do that for her and they don't do that for the collective of black women. So her efforts are futile. I mean, even the way black men respond to interracial controversy involving other black men is self-serving. If this story involved a black man and a white woman, for example, black men would band together and go up against the woman and there would not be a focus on trying to discourage or scare other black men away from non-black women. They wouldn't be shading other black men for dating out. It would be strictly about that individual man and woman. You see what they did with Jeezy and Jeannie Mai. It wasn't no, oh, this is why you shouldn't date a non-black woman or see, they're just as bad as black women. No, they just treat them as individuals and they keep it pushing and they still date who they want. They still gonna date and marry out. It does not matter if some of their interracial relationships fail or not. They are still gonna keep their options open and tell other black men to keep their options open, even if they themselves choose a black woman. 
And look, I am not saying that black women should be dumb in interracial relationships like black men are, but we should definitely take from their playbook and treat these as individual situations and refrain from using them to keep black women with black men or using them to push false narratives about black women in interracial relationships or using them to cape for the collective of black men. Responding that way is not in the best interest for individual black women or the collective of black women. And it sends the message to other black women, especially young black women, who are very impressionable that they shouldn't explore their options in men, which is very bad advice. And I also want to remind Black women, as more of us explore our options in other races of men, we're going to see more of those relationships fail, just like any other type of relationship. There's a 50% divorce rate in the United States. And I'm pretty sure the divorce rate between Black women and white men is a little bit lower. But as more of those relationships come to exist, the divorce rate may go up. And you know, that's life. Not every interracial relationship involving a Black woman is going to last forever. Not every Black woman will be hypergamous with a non-Black man. There will also be dysfunctional interracial relationships. Some Black women will become baby mamas to their non-Black men. And yes, some of these Black women in these interracial relationships who have couple channels will fail, just like all the other ones fail. And guess what? Those failed relationships still don't change that many Black women will also have a better experience dating non-Black men. They still don't change that many of us will still get better providers over the fence. Rose lying about her husband and her marriage won't change that. Her and other dysfunctional interracial relationships involving Black women, they don't change that statistically Black love fails more than any other relationship pairing. Using this as a gotcha moment for swirlers and women like me who encourage Black women to explore their options, it does not change that relationships between Black men and Black women have a higher failure rate. So because Black relationships on average fail the most and are the most dysfunctional, failed swirling relationships are not going to stop black women from dating and marrying out y'all. I'm sorry, the floodgate is open. And I know I'm going to get some people who say, oh, well, we don't want to stop black women from dating out. We don't care who you date. We just want you to do it the right way, blah, blah, blah. That's a lie. Most of y'all don't want us to date out at all. You care a lot. And most of you hate seeing black women with a man who is not black. And that is why you foam at the mouth and your reactions when a relationship between a black woman and a non-black man fails. And especially after the black wife effect went viral. Okay, y'all have been waiting. But failed swirlers aren't going to stop black women who want to swirl from swirling. They're just going to look at the failed relationships. They're going to pick better men and they're going to attempt to do it the right way. So the fear mongering, the scare tactics, they just are not going to work. I've said that for years and you can tell it's really not working like that because black women are still swirling more and more as the years go by. Now, are all of us moving strategically or doing it the right way? No, but that comes with the territory. And black women, you need to recognize that stories like this one with Rose, they are a jackpot for people who resent black women in interracial relationships. And that makes up a very big part of the black community. Even some of the black women who say they don't have a problem with black women dating out and they claim they're trying to help you make better choices. They don't like it either y'all. They don't. And some of them are also trying to push the narrative that there's a critical mass of black women in interracial relationships or black women with platforms like mine who quote unquote worship white men or make swirling our entire personality all because we're encouraging black women to explore their options. And I do think some black women are guilty of worshiping white men and worshiping interracial relationships, but it's not most not here online or in the real world. That is something that's being exaggerated by people who prefer that black women be with black men. And it's interesting because black women, especially black women online, they frequently make a lot of things their personality, whether it be pro-blackness, black love, femininity, soft life. So I noticed that we as black women like to pick and choose what we like to be extreme about. But the truth of the matter is, ladies, none of the solutions or alternatives that we discuss for black women should be your entire personality. And I've said that in so many ways for several years. Sometimes the situation calls for extremes, but we have to know when to stop or recognize when we're going too far or going past the goal that was intended. And that seems to be what women and honestly humans in general have a problem with. We go back and forth between different extremes. But again, I think the extreme black women, the extreme interracial dating black women, they represent a very small number of black women. And people want to make that number bigger than what it is to feel better about their bad or less than ideal relationships with black men. That is what this is all about. 
or they want to bring down the black women who actually got a better deal with a non-black man. They want to bring her down a notch so they can feel better about their situation. And they use women like Rose to do that. See, this is a lot deeper than Rose and it's important that we as black women understand that and see through the games that people are playing, especially in the online responses to this story. Behind a lot of this outrage is a very deep-seated resentment for black women who date and marry out and or make better or different romantic choices. And that was very apparent in the interview that Tasha K did with Rose. And my message to Rose, if she's listening and other black women who marry or date out is stop apologizing for your beliefs. Stop apologizing for your relationship and the reasons you went over the fence. Stop explaining your choices to Black people and stop going on platforms that are not safe spaces for you and other Black women who date and marry out. You're just making it easier for them to try to embarrass you and exploit you. I know a lot of you, you just want clicks and views, you want follows, I get it. But in my opinion, it's not worth sacrificing your dignity. Just keep that in mind. So that is all I have to say on this. Let me know what you think down in the comments and and I'll catch up with you in the next video.